Dear ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this conference about the role of culture in business education. Now, what do you think of if you hear the word culture? Well, this depends on who you are. Let's say if you are from farming, then you may think of the growing of plants and animals. And when you are an artist, or maybe sometimes a politician, you will think of the uh, uh, raising the level of people, of education. But in this case, when you are from a business, then a culture has come, and especially international business, culture has come to mean something else. It is the different ways of acting and uh, thinking and feeling of people who are from different backgrounds. And that is uh, what this conference will be about. Uh, personally, I have made a definition, which is that uh, culture is the collective programming of the mind, distinguishing the members of one group or category of people from another. And then I mean the group of category is usually the nation or the organization or the region or the religion or the occupation or even the gender, female or male, or the family. But in business environments we mostly talk about national culture and organizational culture. Now in the time we are living in, when business is getting more and more international, globalization it's sometimes called, with the, which is a big word in fact, but uh, then uh, it, culture has been discovered as a very crucial element. But this is not the first time. I've been digging a bit in the uh, history, European history, of statements about culture. And the oldest I could find is a statement you probably may have heard, which is, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. And this dates from the fourth century after Christ, when there was a bishop in Milan, and some of his people went to Rome and said, well, in Rome they fast on Saturdays, and we fast on Fridays. Now, what should we do? And then he said, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. But that was the first time where people were warned about what you could call now cultural differences. Now, there is a famous French expression. I don't know how good your French is, but I'll translate it for you. But it is, in French, it's vérité en deçà des Pyrénées, erreur au-delà. And this means there are truths on this side of the Pyrenees, which means in France, which are falsehoods on the other side of the mountains, which is in Spain. And that dates from the 16th century, from Michel de Montaigne, but it has become famous by Blaise Pascal in the 17th century, and it is very often cited still. So this conference will deal with what to do and what is true if we cross borders, to understand the ways of acting, thinking and feeling of the people we will be dealing with elsewhere. Now, of course, one important point is what language do you speak? It is very important that the people who talk together, they share at least one language and therefore it is, I would say, it's essential that people who are in international business at least master two languages reasonably fluently. And uh, this is not only a matter of being able to communicate, but also the fact that you master two languages means that your mind has developed a flexibility where you, are, you realize that something which is said in one way in one language may be said in a different way in another language and that is very important. Now some of you in the audience may already be experts in international business or even in teaching international business and culture and some of you may, for some of you the subject may be new but I hope that this conference will give you all something that uh, helps you ahead. Uh, what 
actually ITIM's approach in this conference is will go to do is that it will explain to you something about what I would call the grammar of culture. You know, if you learn a language, you have to learn something about the grammar, which is the rules, why a word is formed in a certain way. But you can do these things about culture as well, and culture is much more than language, and it is not what I mean by grammar in the, time, in the way of language, but it is certain rules, certain basic problems, which every culture solves, resolves in its own way. And that is what the culture in business education is very important for. Now, intercultural understanding, which is what actually the purpose of business education and culture is, intercultural understanding is the most difficult when it is about one's own culture. And it is the most important, because wherever you go in the world, the one thing you always take with you is, of course, your own culture, the culture you grew up in, which is mainly formed in the first 10 or 12 years of your life. And you have to uh, be aware of this because uh, it influences the way others see you and others react to you and act towards you. Um, so, and this is difficult and there is a traditional naive uh, idea that, oh yes, all these other people have cultures. We are the only people who don't have cultures. Actually, there was a French, uh, uh, sorry, a British um, a philosopher in the 18th century said, well, the special thing about the Brits is that they don't have culture and all the others have culture. Well, this, of course, we now see as extremely naive and precisely if you are British, and you want to do international business, you should be aware of what the British culture represents to others. Um, the difficulty of finding of, uh, about your own culture is larger if you come from a large country, because then the opportunities you have had to meet people from elsewhere is less. And also people from large countries are usually not so good in speaking other languages. So, uh, it is very important uh, that you do that, and that is why probably many of the ideas about a culture in business do not come from your large neighbor up north here, but they come from Europe, which is a part of the world where a lot of peoples live together, a lot of languages exist, and people had to learn to understand each other languages, each other's languages. So ITIM is also a European organization and you will find this out. I wish you a very good conference.